Okay, so this is Greg Euros with Maricopa County Process Service in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, today I'm going to discuss uh, due diligence as it pertains to service of process. So, when it comes to due diligence, one of the first things that you want to know is how many attempts is your process server going to make on your case? Um, we uh, at Maricopa County Process Service, we send a lot of work out nationwide, all over the country. So we get bids in from just all, all every state in the union. Um, and if, just take for instance Dallas, Texas. If we, were, if we had a, a job going to Dallas, Texas, we could put a bid in and within a matter of minutes we're going to start getting multiple bids coming back to us and people are going to be competitively bidding on, on, on those jobs. Um, one of the things that they're doing is they're giving us price and they're giving us the number of attempts that, that they will do for that amount of money. And the number of attempts vary greatly. I mean, I see, I see folks out there that want to do two attempts and call that diligence for a service of process. Not hardly, not in our book. Um, I think the average is probably more three, four, five attempts. That's pretty much the average of what folks are doing. At Maricopa County Process Service, we, uh, we do five attempts. We feel five attempts is good, solid due diligence. The reason being is that five attempts gives us the ability to do uh, two evening attempts, two weekend attempts, and one um, early morning attempt before a person goes to, to work. Um, so if a judge was looking at an affidavit of, of non-service, for instance, and they saw that, uh, that the process server made two attempts in the evening, two attempts on weekends, and um, one attempt early morning before somebody should be going to work, um, they're going to look at that favorably and think that uh, that good solid due diligence was performed in that case and they may actually offer uh, the ability uh, allow you the ability to do method of, alt uh, of alternative service and if you haven't seen our videos yet on method of alternative service we have two of them out there uh, one of them is a method of alternative service by posting the other is method of alternative service by publication you might want to check those out but that's a totally different subject so we're, and, and when it comes to due diligence what you want to look at is how many attempts are, is the process ever going to do for the amount of money that they're quoting you, okay? And when are they going to do those attempts? If somebody says, I'll do four attempts, and they go out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and give you a, an affidavit of due diligence saying, um, uh, well, we tried serving them. We went out there four times and nobody was ever home. A judge is going to laugh you out of the courtroom. There's just no way that that's good due diligence. You can't go someplace the same time every day. Just as you couldn't go to someplace um, at, say, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning, 11.30 in the morning, uh, 1.30 in the afternoon, and 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and call that due diligence. Judge is going to look at that and say, where were the evening attempts? Where were the weekend attempts? When did you try to get them when a person might not be working? If the average person works Monday through Friday from 8 to 5, when did you ever try them when they might be home? So um, those are the things you're looking at. Number of attempts and the times uh, that those attempts are going to be made. Um, so that's basically um, things that you should expect from your process server. So another thing that a process server should do is verify residency. If uh, they are making attempts on a property and, the, and um, the person seems to be avoiding or evading service, they're just not wanting to answer the door, um, the process server should be making contact with some neighbors and trying to find out whether or not the subject is actually the person that's living there. Now, some process servers aren't altogether comfortable doing that. Uh, there are ways that you can do it with a little more finesse than others. Um, what you don't want to do is knock on the door uh, to the next door neighbor's house and say, I'm a process server and I've got papers to serve on your neighbor, next door neighbor here, Mike Green. Do you know if he lives there? Um, probably not the best approach and maybe even violating a little bit of the subject's privacy in that regard. Um, maybe a better tactic might be to knock on the next door neighbor's door and say, yeah, I'm here to see Mike Green. And, and, and the next door neighbor turns around and says, uh, 
oh, well, Mike, Mike Green doesn't live here. Uh, he lives next door. Or he lives across the street, if you're, if you're across the street, whatever. Um, and you can sit back and say, oh, well, my GPS stopped me right in front of your house, and, you know, I never even looked at the street address. I just got out and walked up to the door. Sorry to bother you. And, and that's it. But you've verified the residency that he lives there. Okay? So um, the process server should be making contact with neighbors, should be looking for uh, clues that the person lives there. And one of those other clues are... Vehicles. Vehicles are very, very important. Um, anytime we go to a place, before we even approach the door, we're documenting drive, uh, license plate numbers. We're looking at um, uh, license plate numbers for cars that are in the driveway, license plate numbers for cars that are parked on the street in front of the home. Okay, And we basically want to do that so that at some point, if it becomes a non-serve, we can go to the motor vehicle department and we can research that. Now. Process servers can't go to the motor vehicle department and do the research. You have to be a PI. Now, a lot of process servers, like myself, uh, are PIs and process servers as well. So we have the ability to be able to do that. Uh, but that's what you want to do. You want to be able to turn around and uh, go uh, uh, document all that information so that at some point in the future you can go out and you can, you can go down to the MVD, you can run the MVD, you know, the plates, and you can get the information. And if you get a hit that comes back, evidence for the judge, this person lives there, you're good to go. Um, so that's really good. The other thing too is that um, if you do make contact with somebody and they deny being who they are, you always want to get a physical description of that person. Um, but if you are a PI, you can go down to the MVD, you can pull the MVD photo of that person and you can look at it and go, that was the person. So now you have verification the person lives there. They, the plaintiff can take that to the judge uh, and say, um, you know, here's the uh, MVD report. The person lives there. And in the affidavit, the process ever listed that the person denied their identity but uh, was later identified by a photo. Uh, and that should build a case for you to be able to do method of alternative service. Uh, so. Uh, cars are very, very important. One of the other things that's important is postal uh, searches. If it turns out that it's a non-serve, then you can do a, you can, the process server can send a letter to the postmaster of that zip code and have the postmaster respond with verification of the address that the person does live there or that the person moved and left no forwarding address or that the person moved and left a forwarding address. So it's really important to, uh, that a process server exercise that due diligence and be able to offer those services to their client. So um, again, most important things are um, the number of attempts, the times that those attempts are going to be made, speaking with neighbors and verifying residency, obtaining uh, vehicle information, and postal skips. If you do all five of those, you're going to be doing solid due diligence for your client. This has been Greg Euros with Maricopa County Process Service in Phoenix, Arizona. We are located at 77 East Weldon, Suite 250, Phoenix, Arizona, 85012. Our phone number is 602-424-7474. We are open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5, I hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for other videos on the subject of process service. Thank you. <laughs>